Welcome to this tutorial on finishing and then sharing your Kahoot. So once you've added all of the questions uh, that you're interested in adding and you've checked them, you can also preview what that's going to look like when you show it to your class uh, on the screen. Once you're done here, one of the things you will want to do, and you'll see here it says save to my drafts. Up here I can title my Kahoot. So I can click in here and maybe I want to call it um, Kansas Trivia. It only has one question right now. I can add a description that just helps when you're finding. Um, and so what that means is when you did those searches in the discover menu, when other people look for them, it might be a good place to help add a description. You can save here. There's ways to, I've got these. I want to save this for mine. I don't necessarily want to save it in Clearwater. I could save it to Clearwater if you have a school account, if you are somebody who has multiple teachers teaching the same thing. So for example, if you have like four Algebra 1 teachers, uh, they might share from the same pot of different Kahoot, so not everyone's there. Um, I can do language where it's listed, uh, those kinds of things. So I'm going to say, yeah, I'm done. I feel good about all those things. See now that it's Kansas Trivia. When you're done with your Kahoot, you can go ahead and click Done up here in the top right-hand corner, and it'll say it's ready to be played. If you haven't named it yet, it's going to pop up. It's going to ask you to name it if you skipped naming it up here. You can test this Kahoot out. Uh, by testing it out, it effectively gives you that same preview uh, that we had. And this is the same thing. So this shows then the student device side. And it shows a phone here, but this can be played on a Chromebook or on a uh, laptop. And then it also shows what you would see on the screen. Okay, so um, you can see then what it would look like on both ends um, for that. Uh, if you want to, you can click play now. So when I tested that Kahoot, what you just saw was the whiteboard or the projector version and then the student side. So on this, that's made for a live setting. So when I click play now, there are two options. There is teach, which is a live game together. Okay, so that would be you projecting it on your whiteboard. It says here that you can do it for virtual classrooms. Uh, that would be about like sharing your screen, uh, doing some setup with that. This would be for the traditional sort of in-class playing way to do it where kids are playing together side by side in a live setting. Or you can do a sign, which is self-paced. Um, and so when I do a sign, I need to answer some questions about when it becomes available, um, like a due date, whether there's a timer on the questions or not, uh, some of the personalized learning, some of those things that are there. So this is really, it's called a challenge. This is really great for, um, it was great for distance learning. If you couldn't get kids all together at once, it's great for kids to work on on their own, maybe review style, uh, study guide, things they're at home. So effectively, um, when we do this and we go to play it, this is the self-paced version assigned teach. This is the live version um, when we do that. Uh, so let's say I'm going to do a teach option. It's going to load up your game. There are some game options here. So I can do shared devices. If you don't one to one, you could do team versus team. So maybe you're a school that's not one to one. Um, here we got our one to one devices. The game options, just want to look at a few of these for you. Um, the personalized learning uh, lets players difficult questions after the live game. So you can turn that on. You could read more about that. Here's our friendly nickname generator. Normally when you play, kids put their own initials or names in, and you may have some issues with some inappropriate names. I'd suggest you check out those five things you didn't know about Kahoot above. There are some tricks for that as well. Uh, but if you don't want to worry about that, you can just make the friendly nickname generator. So the kids don't have to put their names in. It gives them one. Uh, already. Uh, the lobby music, uh, you, there are some options here for the different music you can choose. Um, randomizing questions, answers, things like that you may or may want to turn on or off depending on how your your classroom is arranged, or how your students are, uh, those sorts of issues. Um, and then you can go through. I would not turn on automatically move through questions because you're probably, especially in the formative assessment setting, going to want to stop, maybe talk, discuss, specific questions, ones that are good, bad, you're having issues with. So I'd be careful about using the automatically move uh, through your questions. But those are some game options that you can look at. When you're ready to play, you just hit the button that you want. So for example, classic, 
it gives you your display code, which kids visit then the kahoot.it or if they have the kahoot app. So that's playing our game. Lastly, when we're done, the other option for sharing your Kahoot is to share it with a link. So for example, uh, when I look at my Kahoots, and we're gonna go to that Kansas trivia option here. Here we are. I can also have a share button here. And so I can share to specific users if I know their names. This is more likely. I can copy this link. This link then can be pasted into emails, into Google Classroom, um, however you create, talk or communicate with students, as well as then I can also share the link via these channels down here. So you'll see Google Classroom is also one. So there's also a Google Classroom button that I can share and I can select my class and I can share that game directly in Google Classroom. So this link is really helpful uh, if you want to post that in Google Docs, other places, uh, or there are also specific apps down here.